Welcome back, folks. At the end of the previous episode, we had some copper ingots in our inventory, and we couldn't stack them together because they were still hot. Now that they're cooled, we can stack them, like so. However, let's get them out of our inventory altogether. We could place them on the ground like other items, using the V key to place them on the corners of the block. I think that works even if they're still hot, but I haven't tried it. However, with ingots, we can also create an ingot pile simply by right-clicking them on the ground. This is much more compact. Uh, it'll allow us to store up to 32 ingots in a single block. Unfortunately, you have to wait until the ingots are fully cooled before you can do that. Uh, next thing up is we want to get the chisel back. We still have hammer in hand. Okay, um, I'm, getting, uh, I'm getting a little bit thirsty, so let's top up the water again. Okay, so I've shown how we can get the smooth stone just by clicking on it. Um, one of the things to note, yeah, we'll do that here. If you're used to old TFC. So it used to be in old TFC you could use... Uh, the chisel on any block anywhere, like like any raw block. Um, but then weasel, weasels like me were then uh, going around in mines, and once we got our mine started, we would just use the chisel everywhere. And since chiseled blocks don't cause cave-ins when you mine them, uh, we just chisel wherever we wanted to mine, and then mine those blocks out, and there'd never be a cave-in. And plus, you get all these nicely chiseled blocks that you can use, smooth blocks I'm talking about, uh, to build with. So I guess Biox didn't like that, the bypassing his cave-in mechanics like that. So he made it so that you could only chisel uh, raw rock if there was no raw rock immediately above it. So I'd be able to chisel this one, but I wouldn't be able to chisel that one. Okay. Now in this case, having chiseled this one, it's no longer raw rock, so then I would be able to do it. But if you think about being in a mine, right, if you're down in a cave, it's like you you don't have, you know, you go over to the wall of the cave, there is no gap above the rock. It just goes on and on way up above you, so you have a calm rock. So that prevents you from just using the chisel on all the rock around you and then taking it out. However, it appears that uh, the original behavior has returned in TNG because I can just do that again. Now, yeah, the one thing I have noticed is these can start... Um, these can start rock falls, uh, cave-ins. Future Maya knife here. I'll spare you my original bumbling explanation. What I was trying to say here is that when you use the chisel to make smooth stone, there's a chance that that action will cause a cave-in, or will start a cave-in. Uh, we'll return you to our original commentary now. The thing I wanted to demonstrate with this stuff is these uh, raw blocks here. How do you get them? Because as I showed, if I just wail away at it with a pick, I'm just going to end up with a bunch of rubble. A bunch of rock. So the way you get the raw block intact is you have to remove all the blocks that are touching it. There we go. And if we look in here, we now have this one block of raw andesite. So I am going to now mine out uh, another six of these because that's what I need for the next thing I want to do. And that's going to get a little boring, so boring for you guys to watch at any rate. So I'll bring you back in after I'm done with that. See you in a bit. Okay, so I've got my uh, raw andesite that I need. Let's clear some space here. So the first thing I want to do is... We're going to make a quern. Uh, Quern is used to grind stuff up. It's a very, it's like a primitive hand millstone kind of thing. 
There's my stick set over here. Oh, I don't need a stick, I just need to take it. So that's the quern itself, the base. And so that was three. Sorry. So that was three raw rock and three of uh, the smooth rock, the chiseled rock. So there's also the stone itself, the grindstone that goes into it, or it's called the handstone, I believe. Yeah, handstone. So we'll take that as well. Put the clearing down there. Put the handstone on it. And you notice, like I said, well, we have these two potatoes here. Well, that's not what we do. Let's have a look at my levels. Uh, my vegetable level is not bad, so... Eat a few potatoes. Mm, yummy. So what have I got here? Oh, this barley's going to go in one day. So let's do that right now. Okay, so what you do is... Oh, first thing I need to do. This is still just the, like, stalks we cut off of barley. So you have to take a knife and cut away the chaff and everything else to expose the grain. And you get a little bit of straw when you do that. Then you take the grain, put it into the quern, and click, right click the handle. And we get some flour back. Okay. Next thing to do is I need some wood. Oops, wrong place. Take this maple log. Okay, we make a bucket like this, a wooden bucket. Grab some water. Water plus flour equals dough. Uh, let's find our fire starter again. Come into our campfire in here. Uh, get some light on the subject. And actually, let's see. Does so does the torch throwing a torch work here as well for starting this up? No, ooh, that's inconsistent. <laughs> I, mean, I wonder if I should report that as a bug. Okay, so we, whoops, oh, was, uh, that might be the problem. I don't have any wood. Yeah, let's, let's, let's try this again. This time with some wood. Whoops, that is not what I intended to do. Well, I only need one in. Okay, now let's try throwing a torch on and see what happens. Nope, so it really doesn't work. Okay. Right. So, for the campfire, we do... Piers need to use a fire starter. I'm sure if we had a flint and a steel, we could use that as well. But there we go. Now it's on. Cook that dough ball. And cook the other. And we get bread. Yay! And you notice, whereas that uh, the barley that we started out with only had one day before it expired, we get 21 days off this bread. So, you know, that's the other thing is that you can really extend your the lifetime of your food quite a bit. I should get some torches out of this while it's still burning. You can really extend the length of your, you know, how long your food lasts before it rots by cooking it up into bread, or at least how long your grain lasts. Uh, off screen what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake up, I'm going to grind up, let's see, yeah, it decays in one day, three days, yeah, so all this grain is about to go, except that one, that's still good. So I'm going to grind these guys up and make bread out of them. I'll try tossing actually some of them back in here to see if being in the, uh, in the chest extends their life, but I don't think it does, so. Anyway, so next time you see me, I'll probably have a ton of bread. And uh, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, that's all cooked up. If you look in here, you'll see we have lots and lots of bread. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we have several here that decay in about five days. So let's grab all of these, all these cornbreads here. And let's combine them so they all end up at exactly the same date. There we go. So they all expire at 2333 on August 5th. Right. Now what I'm going to do is put one of them back in here. I'll keep one of them in my inventory. Well, actually, I'm going to... Let's keep two. So I have one to eat. And we'll put the rest... into this vessel. And then put the vessel into the uh, chest. Okay, so one of these I'm going to eat right now. Uh, have a look at my stats. So you see my grain stat is basically down to zero, so we eat this. And, oh, my grain stat is up a little bit. And this guy, put it to one side so I don't accidentally eat it. So unfortunately, uh, most of this bread expires pretty quickly, like this stuff is all in one day. Some of them are here, it's 20 days, and it all has to do with how long, like, how much time the grain had left in it before I turned it into dough and then into bread. So I got a few here that are going to expire in one day, so I'm going to be eating them. And then five days. But anyway, between the lot of them, That'll give us enough to keep us going until our crops can come in, but we still don't have a lot of crops here. So, um, I really need to get more crops going. See, the uh, next thing we're going to be doing in terms of the me metallurgy is setting up uh, anvils. So, we can actually sort of do a bit of that now. Smooth andesite, raw andesite. Okay, the first anvil we get is just a stone anvil, so it's a block of raw stone, but it has to be one of the harder stones, um, either igneous or igneous intrusive, I think, and andesite is one of the harder stones. So we can put that guy down there, and take this hammer, and, and so we just right-click on the top of the raw stone with a hammer and that, that turns it into an, an anvil and to keep it as an anvil we take the hammer out and put it in there. Okay, so now the problem we have is that we need to be able to uh, weld ingots together. So we have two ingots here but to uh, advance further, like to get a copper anvil, for example, which will be the next stage up, uh, we need to be able to make double ingots, which you take by heating up two, two regular ingots, and then in here you can, in the, uh, using the anvil, you can weld them together. However, to weld them together, we need a material known as flux. And flux is a ground-up version of uh, one of four different types of stone. Uh, limestone, marble, dolomite, and chalk, I think. Yeah. And we don't have any of that around here. So really to advance any further with the metallurgy, I'm going to have to go on a hunt for the specific rock types. And that's going to take some time. So... Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to check my crops once more, and we've done that often enough on camera that I'll do that off camera. And uh, then after we get back from that, I think what we'll do is a little bit of building with the smooth stone. So, be back to you in a minute. Oh, looks like the uh, blackberries are finally in. Yep, there's one. What about these guys? Still not them yet. Oh, ho, ho, do you see what I see? There is fruit on our fruit tree.
Yes, indeed. Let's clear some stuff out here. So it looks like it's green apple. Oh, no, it's lemons. Okay. I'm just right-clicking on the uh, blocks that show fruit. Just click this up and then I'll show you how we can propagate trees. Unlike berry bushes, you can propagate fruit trees. Got one more block to get at here. Oh, another one. And I think there's one more. Yeah, there we go. Whoops. Nice. So a total of 23 lemons. Sweet. Well, sweet and sour, I guess. There we go. 23 lemons. Cool. Um, so what we can do is take an axe, and you see that there's these, like, cross-shaped branches coming out. So... You can wail away at those with an axe, chop them off, and there's a percent, oh, we got it. There's a percentage chance that you then get a sapling out of it. So we have a lemon sapling, which we can take back and use to start our own orchard. Cool. And, oh, look, another one just bloomed. So the other thing we can, of course, look at is our... Uh, health levels and we can see fruit is really low and now we get to eat a lemon uh, let's eat another one and if we look at our levels our fruit level is up a bit so we're doing pretty well that's that's a really good find i mean it's a really good to have that uh the only thing is fruit goes goes bad pretty fast see it's fresh and it only lasts for 10 days. Now we'll be able to extend that a bit by putting it in containers and stuff like that. But even so, it's not going to last us a whole lot of time. But it's still, it's good to have. All right, I'll continue checking my crops and get back to you when I'm done. So that was quite the profitable run. So let's see if we can get these seeds planted. signed up and I guess the last thing to do is we need to clear a space for our fruit tree our lemon tree um, so we're gonna have our berry areas over here right now yeah, over here so this should be a good place for to start off the fruit tree Eventually I'll have to clear some area for it, but right now, let's just get it in the ground. And that's just, as usual, simple right click. Ta-da! And I guess that's going to have to be it for this episode. Uh, next episode, we'll look at building a charcoal pit. And 
I'll have to start uh, searching for a source of flux. Hopefully we can find something nearby. Oh, and we'll do some building with the smooth snow. So I hope to see you back for that one. Have a good time.